I discovered why prisoners are so jacked without having access to a gym and I'm going to reveal how you can steal some of these incredibly powerful tricks to build more muscle yourself. In fact, I even used one of these easy to implement tricks to force my biceps to blow up. Oh, shit. Now imagine that you've accidentally dealt creatine in the wrong alley. And because you never do cardio, you gassed out pretty quickly and got caught. Now you've ended up in jail for five years and you've got nothing but time. What would you do? You could share stories with your inmate, watch movies and read books together, but this isn't enough for filling out a full day. Let's say that after contemplating your life's choices and after noticing that your cellmate is looking just a bit too much in your direction, you decided to start improving yourself. You're mostly sitting around and thus you feel the need for activity. So the easiest way to distract yourself is to work out for an hour or two. Now you don't have weights because most prisons don't allow that any longer because people could use it to smash each other's head in. So what is the alternative? Now most inmates use a combination of push-ups, creativity and pull-ups and dips if the prison has some kind of workout facility. So you decide to do the same. Now most people think weights are necessary to build muscle because that way you can stick to the 6 to 20 rep range. For example, if you've gotten stronger and you're then able to do more than 20 reps, you can just increase the weight until you're back at that 6 to 20 rep range. Though this is easier, it doesn't mean that you can't build muscle with a high amount of rep. You see, there have been numerous studies that show that we can build about the same amount of muscle with as low as 30% of our one rep max, meaning 30% of the maximum amount of weight we're able to lift for one repetition on a certain exercise like the bench press for example. So if I'm able to bench 100 kilograms or 225 pounds for one rep, 30% would be 30 kilograms or 67 and a half pounds, which compared to that 100 kilograms is insanely light. The only limitation here is that these sets with low weight and thus high reps need to be taken very close to failure, unlike when you're training with, for example, 80% of your one rep max. But this means that even when you're doing 30 to 40 reps, you're building close to the same amount of muscle. And even if you go higher, there still seems to be a noticeable amount of muscle growth. Doing 50 push-ups to failure is less enjoyable and probably less optimal than doing 10 with extra weights, but it still builds muscle. However, close to no one is even able to reach that number of 50 reps with proper push-up technique. Now combine that with the fact that you can do so many variations to make this and other exercises harder and you can see great results using just body weight and high reps. Besides push-ups, pull-ups are also common creative ways to do triceps and biceps as well like for example filling up a trash bag with water and then doing curls and abs are also easy to train. And for all these exercises it's hard to pass for the reps, especially when you use some creativity. The only body parts that are actually hard to train are your legs. That's because these are naturally very strong muscles. But for these muscles there is a simple solution called plyometrics. Plyometrics are basically exercises where you simply do a movement as explosively as possible like for example jumping as high as you can and doing that for a couple of reps. However, a lot of people seem to think you can't build muscle with these type of exercises. But current research does suggest otherwise. There is even evidence suggesting that for the leg muscles they build as much muscle as regular weightlifting and even though I do think that it's unlikely that they cause the same amount of growth this does however illustrate that plyometrics are at least a decent way to build muscle. 
for upper body muscles there is more research needed but in my opinion it seems very likely that plyometrics also work for them. The easiest example I can give is myself. I am a javelin thrower which is basically a plyometric movement and you can visibly see that my left oblique is bigger than my right one probably because it's used a lot harder during the rotation in the throwing. So plyometric push-ups and other plyometric exercises can be used and are in fact used by a lot of prisoners to build muscle. But what does this practically mean for you? If you're short on weights, you can still build a decent amount of muscle by doing high rep work and plyometrics. Plyometrics are also useful for explosive strength, so if you're an athlete but still want to build muscle, these are a good alternative. And higher reps are a great way to implement some variation into your training from time to time. Personally, I wasn't seeing much results in my biceps any longer, so I switched up the rep ranges to 15 to 25 reps, and they suddenly exploded in size, as you can see. Now, if you're in jail, you currently no longer have the freedom and you're no longer able to drink, go out on weekends and do things. So what would you do? For most people, working out is an easy way to fast forward an hour or two, just like sleep can sort of feel like a time machine. <laughs> This is the main reason why I think prisoners are so jacked and what we can learn from them. Consistency. Anecdotally, we know that we often see the best results when we're able to consistently keep training for prolonged periods of time. But is this backed by science? In general, it is believed that more volume equals more muscle growth, volume being reps times sets times load. If you, for example, only show up consistently for two weeks, then don't do anything for two weeks and repeat this cycle, you're going to end up with half the amount of volume than if you would keep consistently training. But this definitely isn't the full picture. This next part is mostly speculation, so take it with a grain of salt. But there is evidence supporting the idea that you have to consistently train a muscle for a certain amount of time to fully lock the amount of muscle mass you've gained. If you don't train long enough, the amount of muscle you've gained will possibly disappear more quickly if you then would stop training. You see, a muscle fiber consists mainly of two things, myofibrils and sarcoplasm. Myofibrils are the ones that generate force to contract a muscle to, for example, move a weight. The sarcoplasm is basically fluid that contains mostly water and glycogen, which is the energy that myofibrils use to contract. It is believed that in order for your muscle to grow, it first goes through sarcoplasm hypertrophy which is basically an increase in the amount of fluid in that cell and then after it has done that it starts adding extra myofibrils to that muscle fiber. Now this doesn't seem to happen after just one workout but rather over a period of time and this is why it's important to know that sarcoplasm isn't really muscle mass. Yes it will make your muscles look bigger but the extra sarcoplasm is probably more likely to leave the muscle fiber once you stop training. This means that you have to train long enough to get those extra myofibrils so that you can then essentially lock down your gains. And we can look at the other research and speculate that this probably happens after three to six weeks. So try to be relatively consistent with training and especially exercises for at least four weeks and probably better to be safe six to eight weeks. However, on the flip side of consistency, you do want to change up something from time to time because over time your body won't really see the same results from the same stimulus. So only if you notice results decreasing, you can for example take a break from lifting, change up the exercises, intensity, amount of sets and much more to jump start your gains again. Now you're in prison and you're training every single day but you're not feeling sore and you're still seeing great results. This seems a bit weird because isn't recovery important? Now not every prisoner trains every single day but there definitely are a lot of them out there. 
Hmm. However, it is speculated that lower reps do cause more fatigue. They for sure seem to cause more injuries, which often causes you to take longer training breaks. And we're almost certain that they do cause more fatigue to get the same amount of muscle growth. For example, in one study to get the same volume and thus muscle growth, subjects had to perform 7 sets of 3 reps as opposed to 3 sets of 10 reps. During this study, the group that had to do 3 sets of 10 reps felt so great that they even wanted to do more sets, but the group of 7 sets was so dead that after their workout, they were almost begging the researchers to stop exercising. This sort of shows the fatigue difference between low and high reps for the same amount of muscle growth. And because we now know that inmates mainly perform high rep work, it could be an explanation as to why they sort of recover faster. This all means that if you want to accumulate more training volume but not too much fatigue, including some high rep work, might even be more optimal, but probably not as high as those prisoners, because mentally it's also very hard to do only high reps due to the fact that you have to bite through that muscle burn a lot more. And that's why bodybuilders often stick to the 5 to 20 rep range. And if your sole purpose is bodybuilding, it's probably more optimal if you do the same, but also sometimes include some higher rep work. I almost forgot to say this, but only do high rep work for isolation exercises. For compound movements, your cardio will give up before your muscles will. Now, depending on where you end up in prison, the amount of food and thus calories can either be great or bad. But both cases ultimately result in a better appearance. You either don't get enough food to bulk up, but this would mean that you end up burning fat and this often leads to a more muscular appearance, even though you might even have less muscle. Or if you're able to bulk up, you will look bigger because of the added mass. Though one thing is certain, the food is relatively consistent and it's very hard to eat cheat meals in prison. Rarely can you get your hands on pizza every single day, so you basically don't have much choice besides eating plain foods which can help with lean muscle growth or with that shredded look. You can also often purchase food in prison, so if you're passionate about lifting, you could pay for decent meals to bulk up. Normally, you will also get just enough protein to at least add some amount of muscle mass. We can use this as an example and speculate that keeping relatively consistent eating habits might be a better choice for you. For example, something like having about the same breakfast and lunch every day, this makes tracking calories a lot easier if you're not losing weight and you want to lose weight, simply remove something that you normally eat. And the exact opposite is true for bulking. Not seeing results, simply add some more food and thus calories. This is however up to preference, but for me personally, this has helped a lot. Now your first night at prison might be disturbing. You can hear people talk and do other things that you didn't want to hear. It is reported that sleep in prison is probably very bad. This is weird because we know poor sleep is even associated with muscle loss, so it would seem that sleep is adequate for recovery and muscle growth, but probably not optimal. We can't really learn anything from it, but I thought it was something I quickly needed to touch. Now it's also obvious that most people in prison are no strangers to taking illegal substances that could be harmful to their health. I'm of course talking about drugs under which we can put anabolic steroids like testosterone and as you probably know testosterone is insanely good at building extra muscle. This could explain why some of the prisoners recover quickly enough to pack on size despite the lack of proper sleep and nutrition and training equipment. There will be inmates who are able to smuggle some drugs in and of course some prison guards who like to earn a little cash on the side. Add the fact that a lot of people are in jail because of their drug use and it's clear to see why this is a big reason why prisoners seem to be so muscular overall. So while I go rob a bank, make sure to watch this video because even though the tricks we just learned will help build muscle faster, they're useless if you don't understand this concept from this video first.
<laughs> Time to get checked.